This is a free podcast from the BBC. For more information, you can go to our website, bbc.co.uk slash radio2. I know you're surrounded by yes men. <laughs> Would that that were true. And yes, listeners, well, we hope that's true, but perhaps if you concentrate on broadcasting instead of your stomach, you might get things right. It's called professionalism. No, it isn't, Bob. No, it's what you call professionalism. It's boring predictability is what we call it. I grew up having to listen to you on Radio 1. Yes, I was a Radio 1 jock. Let's none forget... Well, most of you weren't alive. I actually enjoyed your funny little quips, calling the song My Simple Heart, Bicycle Pump or My Pimple Hurts. Debbie Birchall, you're listening to somebody else. I now find myself a bit like Bob Ballard. I now find myself lurching ever nearer to Tigdom. <laughs> I think you're flattering yourself. Um, anyway, I, I tried to resist. I'd like a Tog's car sticker for me dad. Gah, get off. It's for yourself. Only like most people with Tog's car stickers. You're too ashamed to admit it. Buto Macar. Good morning, Buto. Oh, dear Satarian chums. There's no chums here, or even pals. There's me and the rest of them. I'm not called old Terry no mates for nothing. I've just heard a news report from the United States on the 8 o'clock news in which Gordon Brown is going to be meeting the bankers of Wall Street. Buto says the good job dear old Ronnie Barker's not around. <laughs> yes, he could do the old Reverend Spooner on that, couldn't he? Might rank alongside Sir Trevor MacDonald's faux pas relating to the Kent countryside. Uh, he managed to survive all right, didn't he? Still clinging to the wreckage. According to the Daily Telegraph, the BBC says Euripides, Euripides pants, uh, said the BBC are filtering out emails that are critical of their presenters. Yeah, I read that yesterday. I just thought I'd let you know that listening to your show, it doesn't seem to be working in your case. Uh, Rocky Oddcrop says, good morning, good night. Ah, uh, good my lord of Rocky. Yeah, read yesterday's news item that robots may be used in caring for the elderly. It could be a bad day many years in the future for you when your robot carer malfunctions and confuses snorkers with suppositories. I know, I know. It's just a variation on the old joke about the toothpaste. Ah, not content, oh, Dick Nuttall of Halifax. Not content with massive hikes in its energy prices, the gas board has now taken to insulting its customers. Get away with you, Dick. It's gone that far, has it? This morning I received a letter telling me that my old boiler was inefficient. I showed her the letter, and she's taken it totally personally. <laughs> well, I tried to explain, although there'd be some slippage in her performance. This is no more than would be expected in a woman of her age and condition. This didn't do any good at all. She went off in a right strop. This has completely undermined all my efforts to keep her well-tuned and motivated. There's no incentive left now. I'm worried. Things will go rapidly downhill. What really worries me, however, is how did the gas board find this out? While I'm pointing out areas where performance needs to improve, I always try to be sensitive and keep things in confidence. I only ever mentioned it to a couple of people at work, a few at the golf club and one or two people in the local uh, saloon bar. I'm sure I can rely on their discretion, so the only other possibility is that the meter reader installed some sort of covert listening device when he last visited. If this is so, but this is really the limit and confirms we're in a big a big brother state. A few years ago, the gas board invited me to participate in their boiler exchange program. We'd not been together very long, and I decided to stick with her, at least for the time being. But they seemed to be on a campaign to undermine my relationship with no thought at all of the old girl's feelings. I'm just dreading that circular from Weight Watchers now. Well, Jan, who keeps an eye on the papers for me, and of course, somebody has to, because Alec Jones won't do it. Uh, well, according to one newspaper report this morning, the chairman of British Airways only ever carries hand luggage with him. Couldn't he have warned the rest of us to do the same before Terminal 5 opened? <laughs> I think the poor, poor chaps who got the elbow yesterday. <laughs> one of them was that staring fellow who seemed to think it a, a kind of personal insult that people were criticising the fact that the terminal wasn't working properly. <laughs> he wouldn't speak to anybody. According to the BBC News this morning, having a large hippocampus can prevent dementia. Hmm. Uh, so my cholesterol says, even, even if I could afford to buy a huge water-loving beast like that, where would I keep the thing? Exactly. They don't give enough thought to the... Well, 
The cat's been truly left out of the bag by Alan Jones this morning. Yes, Emily, he's a, he's a cat bag letter, you know. And there, there I was, really believing you and the underlings were in the studio from about three o'clock in the morning for rehearsal. And now Alan's just said Beryl Ann Boyd walked in at 6.30. Rehearsal? What rehearsal? Just, he went out for a restaurant of Harry Rag. He'd been here since three o'clock. Goodness sake, give the boy a chance. You know, we don't get up at all hours in the morning for fun. Chelsea, her Miss Barracks, writes from Tenmouth. Uh, like many a tog, I settled down last evening with a glass of mar moribund marsupial. Yes, they make a hearty red, and indeed a hearty white in old Australia. And anyway, other Sauvignon Blancs are available. To watch Eve Tre Trevor Eve and that nice woman from Brookside in Waking the Dead. Am I alone in finding it all a bit difficult to follow? In the wee small hours, I find myself lying awake, tossing and turning, worrying about the plot way. I find myself asking a number of questions. For instance, was the blonde guest actress A, a retired sex worker, B, a former terrorist, or C, Heather Mills? And who is Boyd's son? This is the Trevor Eve character. And why? What's an isthmus? Why does the director never say to Trevor Eve, you're doing a bit too much there, love. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> can we all say it for him? And Sue Johnson says that while filming, they have to keep calling the writers in to explain the plot. Surely, says Chelsea, the dear old BBC can do the same for those of us who persist in watching the stuff. And uh, we were speculating on Kylie, Kylie B. Aboriginal for Boomerang. Well, and then I said, well, kangaroo, what's the Aboriginal for kangaroo? Well, Frank, uh, thank you. The word kangaroo derives from the Gugu Yimitir uh, word kangaroo, referring uh, the Aboriginal uh, grey kangaroo, first recorded as kangaroo or kangaroo uh, in August uh, 1770 by Lieutenant uh, later Captain James Cook on the banks of the Endeavour River and the site of the modern Cook Town where H.M. Bark Endeavour was beached for almost seven weeks to repair damage sustained on the Great Barrier Reef. I knew that. Uh, I was briefly back in the UK recently. Well, well, weren't we glad to have you around, Seamus? He's back in Warsaw now. <laughs> you thought Gork, didn't you? Oh, Warsaw. Uh, can you find a plumber in Warsaw? And recently I rediscovered the Anglo-Saxon grunt when I was in the UK, an item which has now replaced what used to be called customer service. <laughs> yes, I found it in the pub, in the corner shop, in the petrol station, the airport. I've now classified the grunt along with Greek feta salad, New York taxi drivers, haggling in a Moroccan souk, and talking rugby with an Australian. After Monday's excitement, ah yes, this the great British menu. I watched that from behind the chaise long, you know. Uh, after Monday's excitement with the duck's tongues and the bee pollen, not to mention uh, the tobacco-infused rhubarb, Major Dicky and I, says Tamsey, sat down with eager anticipation of what would happen with the fish course, and we weren't disappointed. Mm. Uh, neither was I. Cod's cheek and confit of cockerel's crest, chicken popcorn, and balloons made from blown-up mozzarella. Major Dickey got very baffled. He thought he'd changed channels and was now watching some sort of sex education film. And then there's poor Stephen. Yes, we've all our hearts go out to Stephen. He won Master Chef, you know. And now he's wandering around those that kitchen, looking as if he's woken up in a parallel universe. Roll on tomorrow, says Tansy. The meat course. I'm hoping for roasted sheep's eyelids with a mousse of chicken spit and squirrel nostrils. Well, according to one newspaper, schedule is at ITV. <laughs> this is going to worry Michael. Schedule is at ITV have been forced to drop one episode of a primetime drama series. Someone, who probably ran out of fingers to count on, failed to add up how many slots. <laughs> Schedulers, don't you love them? Were needed to show the entire series, so the least noticeable episode will be, <laughs> will be cut out. <laughs> But you see, who's going to notice? Particularly as the programme's been shown on a Saturday night. You're listening to the Wake Up to Wogan podcast from BBC Radio 2. While approaching Blighty on a transatlantic flight the other day, I turned on my personal radio to see uh, what I could find. Well, it was a welcome diversion from the in-flight movie. I found 
Radio 2, coming in loud and clear, at 37,000 feet. Your dulcet tones fill the cabin. Is there nowhere we can go to get away from you? Are you everywhere, says Tim Burns. Well, I knew your brother, Robbie. Since moving to Bermuda, being able to tune in to listen again has been a daily highlight, says Harry. My wife wants me to get some speakers for the computer, but I like you better without them. <laughs> Isn't that encouraging? Uh, I, ah, from uh, the Director General, Mark Thompson. Dear Terry, I wanted to congratulate you on coming out ahead of me in the poll for the most influential people. Oh, well, Terry, far from having my nose put out of joint, I was really delighted for you, and we all had a jolly good laugh at the irony of it all. Oh, well, I see. Of course, you've been a much-loved figure for many years now, and uh, with absolutely huge fan base. In fact, I really don't know what the BBC would do without you. But this memo is to let you know that with effect from next Monday, uh, we're going to give it a try. And uh, Helen, yes, what is it, Helen Bach? I'd like to join in congratulating all the wonderful people who ran in the London Marathon. But um, just to remind you, there wouldn't be many togs there. Although there, there's a, a sprinkling of the youth among them. They needn't be downhearted because... Uh, just because they're not racing snake fit like you, they can join in this year's Togs Marathon. What, on behalf of children in need? Yeah. An alternative marathon. We do little bits all around the country, and then we add them together. This way, Togs can feel very much part of our fundraising. So if you ran about 10 feet, yeah, and then every other Tog ran about 10 feet, be the equivalent of 26 miles, the Togs Marathon will start on the 29th of August. And, uh, oh, the, Oh, it's all going to happen at the Togs Convention. I shall be starting them, then I shall run as, as far as, oh, maybe a yard. Well, that's a good, good start. And uh, g Great news last week, of course, uh, which we announced on last Friday. Uh, 36 million, highest ever amount raised by you for children in need. Uh, so congratulations to everybody. Uh, no, you can't have my autograph, David. There's only very few people are allowed that. It seems that some doubt has been cast over the actual age of Buster Martin, the marathon runner who claims to be 101, says Barnsley Chop. Does he? I'm, I've missed a lot of this stuff. I've, I've been reading the wrong papers. Using NHS records and scouring the globe by using costly, time-consuming methods, the record verification team has decided that Mr. Buster Martin is actually only 94. Well, of course, any 94-year-old can run a marathon. So it's important to get to the truth. Why didn't they ask his dad? And <laughs> Imogen says, Hats off to the blind chap who's celebrating his achievement of running seven marathons on seven continents in seven days. Or at least that's what they told him. <laughs> no, I only read him. Dear Lynn, you help the traffic flow. The cars, the trucks, the tankers. But it's a shame that you have to work with such a pair of legendary broadcasters. Ed Gaff, do you know... Thank you, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> both. <laughs> both zero. <laughs> Put yourself together. Sorry. <laughs> Bolsey, oh, Bolsey. My heart does pound so. Your dulcet tone, see, up my libido. I am... <laughs> Well, up your libido indeed. Wait, it's someone from the Welsh tax office. Oh, right. Oh, dear. <laughs> die, die, uh, Mr. Aldea. I have a Land Rover I know you'd adore, a Clark's Pie or two adorning the floor. Oh, should I meet you after a few yachidas? I'd pop you the question. Mm. Mm. Okay. We're grateful to Lynn. She couldn't be franker. Um, Just We've stop. sympathy for oh. Lynn, sat across from that veteran broadcaster. <laughs> she's, she's lucky this week. She's had plenty of ditties. I wonder what she's doing this weekend. Could she show me her roadmap? Hmm. Um, I have a slightly different note. If Mayo, you know Mayo, Mayo. comes in yeah, with the does. old... Uh, He's young and trusting. He is indeed, and he knows what to do exactly with a croissant. Uh, if Mayo says he doesn't like eggy... Could you try something? Well, yeah, he doesn't like being called Eggy Mayo. Oh, oh. Sure that. Could try tuna or Thousand Island dressing or something. No, no, we're having enough trouble with these cross as it is. My liege, could you could you do something, please, to curb your comely Welsh squeeze? Hmm? Though passers-by on Butte Street might think her wholesome and sweet, in Cathay's Park she's a Norius tease. 
What did they... Can what you, Park? What do you know about it, Crookie? Don't start. You're in Bangor in Northern Ireland. Mm -hmm. Cathay's Park. And in the lap dancing dives of Panath. Oh, the tart from Panath. <laughs> you know, you had to make a living. She does wrong in a thong for a laugh, causing so many hassles by contra-rotating her tassels. <laughs> Ruining the prospects of many a scrum half. <laughs> her dance utilising a pole excites many co ex hewers of coal. For in her peephole bra, she's a knife all too far, and they tip her the whole of the dough. Look at Crookie. Crookie, stop it. Honestly. It's Friday. You need Calm to get down. out more into the wind and rain. The South Wales Postcard Club would like to invent or inv invite that traffic bird to our fair in Splot this Saturday. Oh, is that on this Saturday? Oh. Ah. She would be welcomed warmly and given a card of Splot by our chairman, Trev. What a postcard. Ooh. Hi, Trev. I'd also like to, uh, a big thank you to her as well. That wasn't what he was offering, but that I thought you'd prefer that. Mm -hmm. It's a great laugh to hear you trying those Welsh words. The fair opens at 10 and the Star Centre in Splot <laughs> tomorrow. Tidy. The Star Centre. Yeah, it's tidy. Is it? Yeah. Don't start. <laughs> now that I'm retired. Ah, James Passford, I was thinking the same myself. Mark and Drayton, I never get out of bed until I've heard the star of your show give her traffic report at 10 to 8. However, yesterday, I had to make the 120-mile trip to Harrogate. Oh, mind oh, how you go, David. There's probably a bit of snow around there as well. Oh, you never know. So I set off at 7.30 so as to hear the whole show. The wireless and the old jag is stuck on the light programme. Yes, of course. Droid to its national. I was amazed to hear there are lots of would-be Lynns on the air. Radio Shropshire, Stoke, Merseyside, Manchester, Sheffield. And they all, yeah, they all seem to cut in while you're rambling on. And never when the music is playing. Entertaining morning. Yeah. That, that There's a button on your radio called TA, Traffic Announcement. If you don't want it, switch it off. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> I, I didn't RDS. know that. It's the RDS. It's the RDS. They're looking. They're looking for traffic reports constantly. And the, RDS? the RDS? That's the Royal Dublin Society <laughs> where the horse show is Well, happening. they're wonderful people and they do the traffic reports as well. I don't believe a word of it, Jim. Where would I? You die laughing. A bit of difference, a bit of southern soul here from Dai. When I woke up this morning and got myself out of bed, made myself a cup of coffee, and went down to my shed. And I drank that cup of coffee and turned on radio too. Shot myself two rabbits, there was nothing else to do. I'm gonna cook myself those rabbits, gonna fry them up with grits. And when Miss Bold she comes around, I'm gonna thrill that girl to bits. <laughs> Oh, rabbit stew. Mm. He's a cocky devil, isn't he? <laughs> you appear to have a very talented cast working with you this morning. It makes a welcome change, Frank. Who are you thinking of? Not only do you have Bond, Charles Bond. Yes. See, he can do it. Pout for us, will you? Oh, yeah. Ooh. And uh, and slip on these tight swimming trunks. <laughs> Charles Bond reading the news. You also have two other talents. Miss Pinchpenny, <laughs> travel reporter extraordinaire. I don't think you should spend that. And the man only known as M, sitting behind the glass. <laughs> this, of course, makes you the brains of the outfit. Q, have you invented anything this morning? Look, I'm just trying to keep alive here. This is, this is my workplace. Do my be work careful with that 007. Don't break it, will you? It'll go off. Not that one, double S. That's the ejector no, 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 seat. No, no, no. Oh. Let's hear it for Lynn Bowles, who in a pleasant manner reads the awful traffic news and can also use a spanner. Although known as a grease monkey, she also fires the blokes to write her lustful poems concerning pipes and chokes. And if I weren't sat sitting writing this, I'd like to be Miss Bowles on Wogan sat before her mic, advising all the nation of trouble without fuss. Who knows? I might just get a lift on Charlie Knows Antique Bus. Only if you pay. First, please. Come along now. Move along inside. Where's Honestly, your ticket? You see, it's gone to his head. The references to him, perhaps, at the next bond. I was in the running at one stage. Were you? Yeah. And, and the late uh, Cubby Broccoli rejected me at the last minute in favour of uh, Roger Moore. You instead of Roger Moore? Hmm. Where did no, Roger from? Moore instead of me. <laughs> he said, your ears are too big, he said. <laughs> and I said, what about Clark Gable, I said. <laughs> hmm? And he said... He'd no answer to that. Mm. Went off in a huff. A telling silence. So Charles could be the next Bond and play the famous role, chasing villains from east to west, or even from pool to pool. He chased these villains all day long, those looking for world domination, and those that would steal our secrets of this beloved nation. But he'd spurn the Aston Martin. He wouldn't want all that fuss. He'd hunt him down and kill him off. 
You can't miss with a big red bus. <laughs> yep. Norman of Newport. <laughs> Bang on way. target there. When is the ejector seat being uh, installed? Oh, well, uh, we'll arrange that. Several ejector seats. God, you know 72 what? of them. I've often felt sitting here when things have gone against me. <laughs> <laughs> I could do with the ejector seat or somebody to say, beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> I think there's probably a button to accomplish that on that desk somewhere, isn't there? The one there's, with no label on, that'll do. There's that. enough buttons here, I can tell you. Mm. Uh, when something goes wrong, mm. there's enough people to come in and go... <sighs> oh, it's not supposed to do that. Oh, no, you no. shouldn't have pressed that. Oh, no. The German, you know, the equipment. Yeah. If you really upset it, the error messages are in German as well. <laughs> it says, Achtung. <laughs> <laughs> you will talk, Tommy. But not now. This was a podcast from BBC Radio 2. Don't forget you can also download free podcasts for Steve Wright, Russell Brand and Chris Evans. Get more information now at bbc.co.uk slash radio2 and wake up to Wogan every weekday morning from 7.30. Online, on digital and on 88 to 91 FM. Wake up to Wogan! And the cheering word from Liz West, I work with people with mental health problems and one of them has asked me to ask you to shut up. See?